one of our subscribers was kind enough to send us some supplies for the goats, some supplies for us even. It was quite a surprise to go to the post office and have this big box. I just didn't know what was in it. And it was full of surprises, one after the other. I was pulling out things that were on our Amazon wish list that one of our generous subscribers was kind enough to send to us. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much these things help us along the way in our journey. And it's greatly appreciated. Red, what are you doing? Huh? Red's doing a little bit of parasite cleanup. Chicken and goat parasites are not the same. So it is good to run chickens behind your goats and they can clean out any of the parasites that may harm your goats. So it's a very beneficial win-win situation. We move this chicken paddock around the pasture to help clean up any parasites that the goats may have dropped while they were th where they were at. They don't move directly behind the goats as a fresh move, but they do move throughout the pasture and the paddock as well. Of course, we're fortunate that the hawks have not been picking off our ducks and they're able to keep a natural parasite control in the buck pen. What are you doing, Tom? Were you about to pick at that bright colorful thing in my pocket? What were you doing? Oh, Eugene, what are you be what are you begging for, huh? You're begging for some scratches. Well, hello, ladies. Yeah. Time and hearts. You're all done with your breakfast? Yes. <laughs> yes, go get some hay. Go enjoy the hay. I'm about to let all the girls out. Time is trained on the milk stand now to jump up. Well, she's not jumping up. She's not fully trained. Yeah. Yes, I'll let the others out now, but she is getting the extra grain that she needs to build a strong baby in her belly and she's getting the used to the idea of jumping on the milk stand. I do have to put her front legs up for her, but she's getting there. And time is calling for her friends, so I better let everybody out now. What, Flippers? What? What you want, boy? My boys. Spoiled for some love. Can't even see his face or his ears. He's gone, guys. Lo's head is missing. What is he doing? Is the best eye at the bottom? Silly goats. Tom, you're awful interested in me today. What's up? What's up, Bella? Are you asking me for girlfriend? I know, I know. We'll get you some girlfriends eventually. Don't be sad. Many of you have sent us private messages asking if we're gonna be okay with the coming hurricane that's approaching the East Coast. We should be okay where we are. We're far enough inland in Georgia that we are hopefully only going to have some heavy rains and some high winds. There'll be tropical storm type winds in our area. If the path of the storm continues to move south, it could get worse, but we're pretty prepared here and ready for such conditions. Besides, now we have our Berkey, so we don't need to worry about water. We can just collect it right out of the pond and filter it. So we don't need to fight the people in the grocery store today. We are going to the grocery store to get things like bananas and apples that the kids really like to snack on and that we can have on the counter in case we do lose power. We did lose power last year during Irma for a long time. This storm doesn't look like it's going to take the same path, but that path has changed every hour of the day. Every time I have watched the forecast, the path of this storm has changed. So we are prepared to get worse than what is forecasted. And we're also prepared to get nothing at all besides a little bit of rain. So just for anybody that was worried about us, I appreciate your concerns and we're going to be just fine. 
hopefully we'll be able to keep our internet and our electricity and be able to do some videos for you. Also, I wanted to let you guys know, we will not be going live Friday night as usual um, because Ryan won some concert tickets and we're going to a concert, which is something we don't ever get to do. We have not been out on a date and I think probably, oh gosh. Oh gosh, I don't remember. I don't know that we've ever had anybody watch our kids before. We may have once for an anniversary. Yes, we did. It was it was one of our anniversaries we went out and I think that was it. So this will be really exciting. I'm looking forward to spending some time with my man and just oh, relaxing. It'll be the calm before the storm. <laughs> the storm is expected to reach our area on Saturday sometime at this point. So we'll be keeping an eye out and we may go live unexpectedly sometime over the weekend. We don't want to promise anything because we don't know what our internet's going to be doing. Um, that's usually one of the first things that goes out even before the power. But if we are able to, we will try to just throw up a live show at any point. So be watching for your notifications. Make sure your bell notification is on so that you see it. Take a look guys. Look at what I see. Just a few popping up here and there. But they are starting to germinate. Those are carrot seedlings. They are very noticeable because they come up in a grass-like appearance. And I am very excited. That is not a grass-like appearance. That is an invasive. So very excited to see these little guys finally starting to germinate. Look! We got little ones here and there. I'm definitely going to have to do some thinning. I seeded everything a little thick this fall because I'm my seed are kind of older than I'm used to using because we didn't garden much last year and I had a lot of seed. So I'm hoping that everything is going to do well. I will thin stuff out with a pair of scissors if I have to. Looky, looky. Now these are a little different, right? You see the red? These are beets coming up. Yay! I love beets. I am trying to train these cucumber to go up into this tomato cage. They are growing a lot every day. So every day I have to do a little training. These tendrils are great for using for training because if I just loop that tendril over that wire, like that. I don't even have to twist it up. I just place it against the wire. It's naturally going to grab a hold of that wire and twist itself around it. I'll show you in my next video that I'm out here in the garden what these tendrils have done to wrap around the wire. Oh my goodness, even the squash is starting to develop flower buds, guys. These things are growing so fast in this late summer heat. Look at all of the little baby flowers coming out of the sides of the squash. We will definitely have a chance to harvest some squash this year. I bet some of you thought I was crazy for planting cucumber and squash so late in the season. Um, it's one of the things I really love about growing in Georgia is we really do get an opportunity for a whole second summer. The peanut are doing beautifully. I've never grown peanuts before and I have no idea when I'm supposed to harvest. I know that I talked to a gentleman who grows peanuts for a living and he said 120 days from when you planted them. And if I count that out, then the first week of September would be the correct time. But my concern is, is we had goats come in and we had deer come in and eat some of these plants. So I don't know how much that set them back, you know? Does that set them back a couple of weeks or does that set them back a month or what? And the, the hard part is, is there's no way to know if there's peanuts in the ground without digging them up, which would actually kill them. But I can see here, so what's supposed to happen is after it blooms, it goes down into the ground. But see that one? is broke off right there. This one? Oh, nope. I thought that was in the ground. So it looks like those are just starting to go down towards the ground. This one just barely going into the ground. So I don't think we have peanuts yet. There's a few more on this one. 
yeah that one might be a peanut because it's firm but if more of those don't reach the ground in time I don't know that we're gonna have peanuts and I'm really hoping we do because these will be the only peanuts I'll be able to eat peanuts are very bad for people on an anti-inflammatory diet there are no excuses to eat peanuts if you have an autoimmune disease at all you should avoid them at all costs it's right up there with the gluten and corn of things to avoid but there's a difference in these peanuts these are not normal peanuts these are amazon peanuts which are the only peanuts in the entire world that don't have the fungus growing on them that makes them inflammatory the reason why people have peanut allergies is that fungus the reason why they're inflammatory is that fungus so without that fungus these will be the only peanuts i get to eat all year so I'm really hoping and I think I'm just gonna leave them as long as I can to allow the most amount of peanuts to be formed under the ground oh this is hard this is so hard for me I love peppers and I love look at that it looks so delicious and I won't be able to eat it but my family will so I won't stop growing peppers and I won't gro stop growing tomatoes and I've been doing some research and it sounds like there's a possibility that fully ripe tomatoes and fully ripe red peppers may be in a safer zone for me that I could possibly add those back into my diet at some point. I'm not going to be adding anything into my diet again from this elimination diet for a while. I'm going to be very careful here in the beginning. I mean, it's been about a month and a half. Well, not fully a month and a half, a month and a half without gluten and a month, a little over a month without all the nightshades and everything else that my doctor recommended avoiding. So there's going to be some hard times for watching other people eat the things I love and there already has been. I've actually been feeling really hangry lately. It's that, you know, hungry, angry feeling. I'm hungry more often than I'm not. And I think part of it is because I can't eat almost anything that's in my house even though i've tried to get more of the things i can eat in the house i they run out pretty quick or they become too repetitive where i don't even want to eat them anymore like tuna fish i'm just over it and like chicken tuna fish and chicken tuna fish and chicken sweet potatoes i love sweet potatoes and i'm starting to get sick of them but I'm not going to give up on this because I know my body is healing, whether it's from the diet or the supplements or the combination of both, probably the combination of both. I am feeling a lot better than I used to. I'm still having a lot of major issues, a lot of brain fog, a lot of anxiety, not as bad. The anxiety has definitely gotten a lot better. I haven't had any panic attacks in a while in at least three weeks so that's pretty awesome <laughs> considering the last couple of months i was having panic attacks like every week but i know that growing your own food free of pesticides not no gmos is going to make a bigger difference than if i were to buy some nightshades from the grocery store or some corn from the grocery store a friend of mine rachel is um she's gonna feed me next month when I go to the Homestead of America's conference some heirloom homegrown popcorn corn is a huge no-no on my list I'm going to eat her popcorn because I trust that the things that we grow ourselves the things that are from old varieties of heirlooms and things that are grown free of the pesticides are so much better for our bodies than the crap that they're growing now in the big farms and i think that's why so many people have these autoimmune issues and have these inflammation issues it's not necessarily that corn and wheat are bad it's that the stuff that has been sprayed on them and the genetic makeup of it has changed so much even if it's not a genetically modified organism even if it's not a gmo they have been changed so much because of selective breeding. And so, so many of those old heirloom varieties that we can get from a few great sources like Baker's Creek are the ones that most people who have my type of issues are able to eat. And so I'm looking forward to the day when I can try 
adding those in and seeing what it does to my body seeing if it caused me a lot of pain and inflammation and knowing but at this point in my healing it's too risky to add anything in because I'm still in pain I'm still dealing with a lot of inflammation my doctor recommended that I triple my curcumin dosage three times a day he wants me taking three curcumin three times a day I was on one curcumin three times a day three because I'm having so much pain still especially with the arthritis in my hands a lot of that is the inflammation from the autoimmune disease and of course milking and gardening adds into that I'm sure but a lot of it is because my body is still healing so I need to get more curcumin in my system I need to get a lot more um, used to this diet this has not been easy and one of the other you know factors in the diet thing is you know this food is expensive um, when you buy cassava flour or almond flour or any of those other things that are specialty items the price tag on them is much higher than the other ones so I feel bad telling my kids no 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 that's mommy's that's mommy's you can't have mommy's because that's not right I, I mean I want them to be eating good healthy anti-inflammatory stuff too but I can't afford to buy avocados and eat an avocado every day and have the kids eat an avocado every day and if Liam sees me with an avocado forget it that boy is all over it <laughs> he loves them so it's really been a struggle but I think that it's so worth it I think that I'm going to thank myself at some point when I get over this hangry stage I'm very hangry I'm hungry all the time even when I eat I'm hungry but most of the time it's because I haven't eaten something because there's nothing to eat so you walk around the house you open the fridge you open the cabinet and you're like oh I can't have that I can't have that I can't have that so I really need to do a big grocery shopping at a natural food store but that would cost me another $300 you know and I already did a $300 haul in the natural food section just to make sure that I had stuff like almond flour and, and tapioca starch so that I could bake some stuff that I can eat that is gluten free and I do have those options but it, those are time commitments I have to have the time and the energy to bake something and that's been hard I don't really have a lot of time, free time on my hands around here um, with all the homeschooling and, and gardening and taking care of animals. My time gets eaten up with YouTube, you know, all, all of the time that I commit into these videos. But I'm, I'm moving along and I'm making little gradual changes and steps along the way. And I know that it's going to get easier. And so many people have told me that they get to the point where they don't even crave the gluten anymore. I'm so not there. So I'm making baby steps, I'm getting there, but right now it's just a few items at a time at the grocery store to add in. Um, I can't take away the food from my kids. I, I've got to still get the foods that they are able to eat and can have. And so if it comes down to me buying something like avocados that are supposed to be so beneficial for me, or buying them bananas that are so beneficial for them, I'm gonna buy the bananas. You know, it's so funny because I had no intention of having a long rambling chat like that at all. I actually came out here today going, I have no idea what I'm gonna film. No idea at all. And it wasn't until I started talking to the camera, just like my friend Justin Rhodes taught me, just turn on the camera and start talking. If you don't know what to film, just turn on the camera and start talking. And it wasn't until I did that that I realized that I had a lot of that on my weight on my chest that I needed to get off so for those of you that gain some value from my Hashimoto's diet talk I hope that it's helpful for you and for those of you that don't I'm sorry Daisy it's time for you to put some of that weight back on that you lost when you moved here you know that right we want you to get a little bit more groceries on you before we breed you we're gonna have to start supplementing her with a little higher grain ratio, maybe add some beet pulp to it. Both her and Dominique came to us in the middle of the season and the change of, the stress of moving here
cause them a dramatic weight decrease and we've been working on building that back up with them. This girl right here, she's got slightly bonier hips than Fancy. Fancy 2 and Fancy Girl. Um, she had a copper deficiency that is healed now. So she's she's made some dramatic improvements since this winter when she was looking like a scarecrow. Fancy Girl is drying off from the milk stand. She's still feeding her buck, but her weather, but she's she's not being milked anymore. We had so few people coming to get milk that we decided we were gonna just bring it down to Kitty, our wonderful producer, and Sister Ray, whose milk production is actually declining. So, for those of you that are not familiar with who our young goats are, that little girl back there with Sister Ray is her daughter, Dottie. And that's Jenny Bloom. Jenny Bloom is one of the two white ones, so that's truly scrumptious. Jenny Bloom has more brown on her coat. You see she's got a lot more brown in the top of her body color. And she is Rocky's daughter. Truly scrumptious is Kitty's daughter. I'm expecting great milk production from her and from Dottie for that matter. And then we have Percunis and Blossom. Percunis is a weather who we're hoping to sell. Blossom and Flower. Flower and Blossom are Shady's girls. So, those are our babies. And little Fern here looks like one of the babies. Fern is actually a year old and still tiny. I don't know what the deal is with that. She never had um, coccidiosis or anything when she was a baby, so she, she's not sure why she stayed so tiny. Oftentimes, Nubians really don't grow that much until they're older. Nubians grow up until they're five years old. Hearts is getting a little bit more meat on her bones, so that's good. For those of you that don't know who haven't been with us long, she had a rib injury and has had a very slow, very, very slow healing from that. We almost lost her at one point. So she is still suffering from that injury and we're, we're working on it. And then our, this year, our first fresheners will be rosemary, um, cream if she doesn't sell, precious, and time over there. She's due in October. Luna, we haven't bred. She would be a first freshener because she's almost two, I think. But she is a mini and we don't have a buck small enough for her. What do you think, Lacey? What do you think, Titus? You lazy dogs. Lazy dogs. You love your mommy. Well, y'all, I had no idea that talking about the peanuts I was growing was gonna make me wander off into such a great discussion about my diet. Speaking of my diet, I've got some forage food here, those leaves in my bag. I will be doing a video tomorrow on Smartweed. I'll be adding them to my cassava tortillas that I'm going to make for my dinner tonight. So I'm looking forward to that, finding new alternatives, things that I can eat that remind me a little bit of the foods I used to be able to eat. Can do a body good, mentally and physically. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, comment down below. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon. And we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.